Hi there, Tracy van der Schaaf and uh, we are busy with 10 easy steps to create our intranet with SharePoint communication sites. In the first set we covered the planning portion as well as the physical creation of the site. So next up we want to have a look at the different types of apps we have to create. So remember we did some planning in PowerPoint. So there's some libraries etc that I'd like to create. And um, We'll also look at different columns we want to add to help us identify content better on our SharePoint site. Now when we go to site contents, as mentioned before, we can see the different various apps that's been added. I've started adding some other apps. One of the first apps I'd like to add by clicking on the settings wheel and then clicking on add an app is a lookup list for document types. Now remember, I want to be able to classify content in my site um, to be able to simplify the site, of course, and uh, not have to create so many apps. So if I go to the settings of that lookup list that I just created, I'm just going to rename it. Remember that I always use acronyms to uh, have better naming conventions. So we'll just rename that lookup list, document types. This is used as a choice. I'm not going to be putting it on the quick launch as you'll see that this template actually doesn't use the quick launch on the left um, when you're on the top level so I'll just save that. I've already populated a couple of document types that I want to use of course so if I go back to the lookup list for document types I can then use quick edit to actually just add um, multiple um, items. Now the important thing to remember about lookup lists is that even though I can um, populate this lookup list alphabetically, if I ever had to add a new item, it actually wouldn't be alphabetical, which is a tricky thing when you use it as a lookup column, because the lookup list actually uses the default view in the choice dropdown. So the first thing I do when creating lookup lists is to uh, create a new view to actually uh, always display items alphabetically and also to show more items than just 30. I'm not going to edit the all items view, which is something I never ever do. I always create a new view. So I'll be going to the settings and list settings um, of this app. And if I scroll down to the bottom, you'll see that there's create view. So when I go create view, I can actually copy it from an existing view. So it's quite easy to actually just copy it from the start from existing view, which is all items. I'm going to call this view lookup as it's just easier to know which view it is that I want to use. And very importantly is I'm also going to make this the default view for my list. Now the only two things I need to do for lookup lists is that I need to change the sorting to title because currently it was set to ID. Always click next to an item before you scroll down in case uh, you scroll down your options um, that you've selected. And then the second thing that I need to check is the item limit. So at the moment it'll only show 30 items. Now imagine you have 35 document types, it means that it'll only show the first 30 because of the default view. So I am going to set this to um, at least 100 for example. So um, that would be important for us to actually um, use that so that it displays all the items in our list. Now that the list is created, this is my lookup list, I've populated some items and I've always also changed my default view. Now we can create our document library. I'm not going to use the standard library that's built with the template. Um, I'm going to create a new library for my corporate documents. Again, using a good naming convention, I'm not going to create it with full name. Once the app is created, so this is a document library. I'll then go and rename it by going to the settings of that app. So once in the settings, I can go to list name, description and title, and I'll rename the app. When I create apps, I always put purpose and document owners in. So to store all corporate information for intranet and owner um, as per departments identified. 
I'm not going to display it on the quick launch. So important thing here that I want to show you is that I'm now going to add those lookup lists um, to, and that's interesting that uh, that page didn't display. I'm now going to add those lookup lists that I've created. So in my document library, I can now go and create a column and I can add that column as a lookup. So when I choose lookup, it will surface any columns that I've created on the same site level. So once I've chosen lookup, I can actually go and have a look and say, okay, I want the departments lookup list. Now I've created the departments as well as the document types that I just created. So this I will call um, departments and um, it's going to look at the title column. This is important that you change ID to title column. So I'm going to look at that departments list that I've created and I am going to um, look at the title column in that. I'm going to also add document types. <clears throat> now um, I'm going to create another column. I'm going to call it document type. And again, it's a lookup. And I'm going to choose lookup list document types. And remember that we need to choose title, not ID. Definitely a bit of a flaw that. I hope that they'll fix that soon. So um, I therefore want to use document types. So if I look at this library now, I actually have two columns that I've added. I've added departments and I've added document types which means that if I now create a view for my intranet, so if I go to create views, I can create a view that groups uh, my content by document type, and I can also create a view that groups my content by department. So uh, let's do firstly, let's group by department. And because I've used that metadata column, I can now say, go scroll down and say group by department and then group by document type. You can set the number of groupings it must show and you can also set the number of items. I always set that higher because uh, I definitely think 30 items at a time will drive me crazy. Also decide which columns you want to show. I always switched on the checked out to in case uh, files are checked out and I always switch on the file size. So now we're ready to actually create that view. Another view that, uh, that's great that you can use is also to create, so um, we'll just go to the list settings, our library settings, is to also create the view that's grouped by document types. So if I go create view now, I can actually copy that view that I've just created. So create view will allow me to copy the view that I've just created as soon as that loads. And then I just want to have a look at seeing what um, filtered views I can create as well. So this one um, was grouped by department, you'll remember. So if I go to group by, I'm gonna swap that around now and say group by document type and then group by department. So I'm gonna change the view name to grouped by document type and say okay. You can also create filtered views, which is something we're going to do for all the apps. I am going to show you how to create a filtered view. And in the blog, I'll then list for you the different apps that needs to be created, as well as the different views that needs to be created. So I'm going to just create one more view to show you how filtered views work. Now, remember, I would like to surface content on my intranet also based on the department. So um, for now, I'm going to create a view for human resources. So group by document type would work for me. I'm going to call this view human resources and this view is going to be a filtered view. So human resources. It's not a default view, but I am going to use it for my other um, views. Um, I want to group it by document type, but I won't group it by department because I'm going to filter by department. So if I go to filter, I can actually set this and say, Departments must always be equal to human resources. Um, human resources, that must always be exact match. Otherwise, uh, the filtered view won't work. 
This means that this will be a filtered view for human resources. It only shows human resources um, content. I can then remove the departments and the document type columns because it's actually showing in the filter as well as in the group by view. So that is uh, how we create apps and um, also how we can create lookup lists to point to the lookup lists. I've also gone through the basics of creating a view with you and also on how to create a filtered view. So check the blog for the um, exact steps and the actions that you need to create the rest of the apps. And then I'll uh, catch up soon with you where we will be looking at um, the pages that we need for departments as well as modifying your homepage. So I'll see you soon and uh, hopefully this is really helping you to create a great intranet for your company.